Welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, I will present the battery life test results for the Samsung Galaxy Watch 6 Classic. This timepiece exhibits both positive and negative aspects. I will thoroughly discuss its strengths and weaknesses. Let us delve into the battery performance of the Galaxy Watch 6 Classic. To be honest, it falls short in comparison to other watches I have evaluated. However, I will provide you with an accurate assessment of its position in the market. I typically achieve a battery life of approximately one and a half to two and a half days on a single charge during my testing, adhering to my usual usage patterns. The reason for obtaining varying results lies in the methodology employed to conduct the battery life tests with the device. By the way, I will be presenting the test outcomes utilizing two distinct battery modes, namely the default mode and the power saving mode. It is noteworthy to mention that the power saving mode proves to be an exceptional battery conserving feature on this timepiece. Although my tests did not reveal an extraordinarily substantial extension in battery life, it does provide sufficient support to last throughout the day under certain circumstances. Nevertheless, it is important to consider individual usage patterns when assessing the likelihood of encountering challenges with this watch. Before disclosing the information, I would like to provide a concise and succinct overview. I will present a comprehensive analysis of the battery life, testing methodology, rating system, and market positioning. Prepare yourself for a substantial amount of information in this video, as I have segmented it into key discussion points which I will elaborate on momentarily. Amps in the description below so you can easily navigate to a specific topic. Like I mentioned before, I will keep my explanation short, concise, and to the point, so that the information is easily digestible. With that said let me show you how I conduct the battery life tests for all smartwatches that I test. When it comes to conducting the battery life test for smartwatches, I always maintain the same set of standards and consistency so that when I go about comparing the results, the comparisons are fair. If you are wondering why I have selected these features when testing, it's because these features are the highest battery burners. When you look at the first test I do, I have all-day heart rate tracking which is probably the highest one in terms of battery consumption, same goes with sleep tracking, 20 to 25 screen activations, which I use during workouts, I also track my workout, view messages, and I always begin the test at 100% and end at 10%. Then repeat the test 5 times, and take the average result. Test 2 is a test I feel needs to be independent because there are many people out there that use GPS tracking. A fairly straightforward test, where I conduct 5 tests at a duration of 1 hour, then I take the average result as the final test result. So there you have it, fairly straightforward testing criteria that I always follow whenever I test a smartwatch for battery life. I hope this explanation makes sense. Now that you have an idea of how I test for battery life, let me quickly explain how I rate a device. Once I finish the first test, which is the battery economy test, I rate the device based on the scale that you see. It's something that I came up with myself after testing a bunch of smartwatches over the years, grouping them into categories and creating the five-star tier system you see. I think it's important to provide some context to your test results, rather than a number that's plucked out of thin air. Lastly, the rating system that you see gives you an idea of what's out there in the market, which I think is important to know just in case you want a device with improved battery life especially if the Galaxy Watch 6 Classic isn't the device you want to buy. I will show you the battery economy test results later in this video, otherwise I will quickly explain how I rate a smartwatch for GPS battery consumption. This here is the rating system that I use after I have completed the GPS battery consumption test. This rating system is something that I have created myself, and rather than reinventing the wheel, I use the same philosophy used in the battery economy rating system, test all the smartwatches I have, place them into different categories and then build the five-tier system that you see. This rating system is also, gives you an idea of what's out there in the market, just in case if you are looking for a particular watch with a certain level of performance. Now that is done, I will share my test results next.
So here are the battery economy test results for the Galaxy Watch 6 Classic. As you can see, the normal mode results in comparison to the power saving mode, the battery life is a little better, but based on the testing system that I have created, both battery saving modes deserve its rating of 1 out of 5 stars for battery economy. Using power saver mode, you gain a 25% improvement in battery life. The number seems big, but not big enough as the device is still a 1-star device, in fact the battery life needs to improve by at least 60% to achieve a 2-star rating. In terms of what's out there in the market, it's fairly low. I have owned many Galaxy Watch devices, and unfortunately the Galaxy Watch 6 Classic has the weakest battery life. I will provide the rankings later in this video. If you are someone that use a lot of smart features such as messaging, voice activation features such as Hey Google, or Google Maps, or direct calling, you can expect the battery life performance to be far worse. Please note that I do a very controlled test, and always stay within those parameters. At least this is what you can expect if you do decide to buy the device. Otherwise, I will now show you where the Galaxy Watch 6 Classic ranks in terms of battery economy in the market. Here's the lineup of devices I've tested in the past year. Just so you know, the Galaxy Watch 6 Classic takes the bottom spot when it comes to battery economy. The earlier editions like the Galaxy Watch 4 Classic and the Galaxy Watch 5 series did a tad better. If you're someone who likes to make the most of the smart features on your watch, just a heads up, this is the kind of experience you can expect to get with a 1 star rating. Okay, so if we look at the top 5 devices I've tested, the Huawei GT3 Pro is like the equivalent of the Galaxy Watch 6 Classic. And let me tell you, the GT3 Pro has some seriously amazing battery life. Let me quickly compare the results for you, just to give you an idea of what's out there in the market. This picture right here will show you the difference between these two gadgets. Check it out, my rating system gives you some context on how these devices stack up against each other. The Huawei GT3 Pro might not have all the fancy features of the Galaxy Watch 6 Classic, but it's still good enough for a quick comparison. Ultimately, it'll help you figure out if this device fits your everyday needs. I hope that this information proves to be useful to you. With that said let's discuss the GPS battery consumption results. So here are the GPS battery consumption results. The power saver mode is the most efficient mode by at least twofold. Based on my own testing system, both battery modes are very efficient when it comes to GPS battery consumption, and I will show later in this video where the Galaxy Watch 6 Classic ranks in the market for GPS battery consumption. I use the Galaxy Watch 6 Classic for GPS tracking a lot, and the only thing that kinda bugs me is having to keep an eye on the battery if I want to track for a long time. Because the battery economy is very weak, this has a huge impact on the length of time you can use GPS tracking. The most you can get out of the Galaxy Watch 6 Classic theoretically, is about 14 hours of continuous GPS tracking, but that's really stretching it, however I will explain how I calculate continuous GPS tracking later in this video. So here is where the Galaxy Watch 6 Classic ranks in the market. GPS battery consumption is quite competitive in the market and a lot of the top smart watches consumes below 7% per hour which is very efficient. As you can see the watches ranked from 1 down to 9 are devices that I have rated as a 5-star device. However, if you are someone like me that does a lot of GPS tracking, the most important number is the continuous GPS tracking number, and that will give you an idea of its... So here is the GPS continuous tracking rating and the Galaxy Watch 6 Classic is ranked fairly high. Devices that specialize in multi-sport always does well in this regard and the Garmin Forerunner 55 which is the top device that I have tested is one of those watches. One of the most impressive smartwatches on this list would be the Xiaomi S1 Active and the Huawei Watch Fit 2. Both devices have excellent battery performance that retails around half the price of the Galaxy Watch 6 Classic, so if you are after a cheaper option those devices can be a great choice. Please also note that the numbers you see is purely theoretical and I will quickly explain how I calculate this so you get an idea how I have gone about this. 
So here is the formula that I have created to calculate the theoretical continuous GPS tracking, which goes as follows. I subtract the maximum battery capacity from the battery economy, then divide the difference by the hourly GPS battery consumption. With the top part of the formula, I did not think it was a realistic number to use maximum battery capacity, because you have to allow everyday use of the smartwatch to be included in the calculation. Below is the full calculation for the Galaxy Watch 6 Classic. Maximum battery capacity will always be 100%, battery economy is 30%, which is the test 1 result, which allows for normal day-to-day -day usage, and then lastly, the test 2 result for GPS battery consumption which is 5%. I plug all those numbers into the formula and you will get a theoretical GPS tracking result of 14 hours. Please note that the battery economy is based off my typical usage, so if your usage is lower than mine, which is 30% per day, there is potential to get a longer GPS tracking time. So like I say it's purely theoretical, but it's trustworthy enough to understand the level of performance that you can expect. So here is one last look at the GPS continuous tracking rating in case you didn't get a good glimpse of it. Now you know how I calculated the number, it should give you some context when you see the numbers. I hope that was helpful, now to the rest of the tests, as I conclude this video. You have finally made it to end of the video, and now here is the overview of all the tests that I did for the Galaxy Watch 6 Classic. But before I show you the overview, I just want to quickly share my personal experience when using the watch. Don't get me wrong, that there are some fantastic features to this watch. It really comes down to whether the watch meets your needs. Some of my watch testers don't mind charging the watch every day, because they feel the trade-off is worth it, and sacrifice battery life in order to have all the features they want in a watch. I guess if understand that you will be okay with the watch. I like to do a lot of GPS tracking, managing your battery life is such a hassle at times. I know the device consumes 5% of battery per hour so I would always check my watch during the day and do a quick calculation in my head to make sure that there is enough juice left in the device. Sometimes I would have to cut short my GPS tracking session because I did not have enough battery left. If the battery economy improved, I know for sure that the experience would be much better, unfortunately that is not the case. If you are someone like me that does a lot of GPS tracking, just make sure that you are aware of this before you buy the watch. There is also the option to use the watch-only mode. For those that never owned a Galaxy watch before, watch-only mode is a mode that will only show you the time and nothing else. I really don't see the point in using this mode, because you basically turn off the best features that the watch has to offer. You may have to play around with it to see if you like it. One other thing I didn't get to mention is the ability to recharge the watch. I am going to do this in another video because I have done quite a few tests for this, but long story short, the recharge rate is very slow. From what I know, the device will only take 90 minutes to charge from 0 to 100%. Based on my tests, the Galaxy Watch 6 Classic has consistently taken 132 minutes to fully charge, which is 47% above the 90 minutes as promised. For those that may have bought the device, because of this may feel a little hard done by, which is understandable. But after reading the disclaimer, the 90 minutes was achieved by using a pre-released model, but I will have more information about this in another video. At the beginning of the video, I mentioned that I would get around one and a half to two and a half days of usage per charge. This right here is the final results of it. Power saver mode is to finality the best mode to use in this watch but can only achieve a 1-star rating based on my testing system. In terms of battery life in the marketplace, the Galaxy Watch 6 Classic is very weak. The only area where the Galaxy Watch 6 Classic is strong is the GPS battery consumption. At 5% per hour, the Galaxy Watch 6 Classic is right up there with some of the best devices that I have tested. With a 14-hour GPS continuous usage, it's not too bad, but like I mentioned before, this number is theoretically achievable. Use the timestamps below if you want to see how I calculate this number. That concludes the video, hopefully you have found it useful and informative. I do get that there is a lot of information to absorb in this video.
For more information about the Galaxy Watch 6 Classic, you can go to my website www.smartwatchicon.com. I will leave a link in the description, and you will see the full test results in my blog. Lastly, like, share and subscribe to channel for more future videos like this. Thank you.